Hi folks, let's walk through some Fusion 360 tips and tricks, as well as some stuff that's just new and super useful. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. First thing, this new feature called Named Views. So we all know we can use the view cube or the existing views to orient your model. What's nice now is you can orient your model to a view that you like. Say we'll zoom in on this corner. Right click on named views. Say new named views. Say detailed corner two. And that gives us the ability to switch between these views quickly, efficiently, and to get a consistent angle. That's really useful. Next one, shout out to Chris. This is super useful. Let's say you've got a 2D adaptive toolpath, and let's say that that adaptive toolpath took a really long time to compute, and that's not uncommon for some of the more complicated or larger toolpaths, or if you have a higher tolerance. One of the ways to avoid that toolpath from having to recalculate, if you do something, is to right-click and protect. So again, if you hop back into CAD, if you open and close the file, this will stay valid. You won't have to right click and say generate toolpath. The problem is what if I wanna just change something, something really simple, like let's say I wanna bump it from 10 to 12 inches per minute. With that toolpath already protected, that's important, it has to be protected first. Go to compare and edit, type in feed for feed rate, and let's say we're at 15, let's drop it down to say 13, 0.27, something random, so you can see that I'm giving you a valid tip here. Click OK. Do you want to update? Yes. So it doesn't really look like anything happened, but if we right click and edit, here I'm gonna break the protection just to prove. If we open that up, boom, cutting feed rate 13.27. We updated the feed rate without having to regen. That is awesome. Another tip is, in general, compare and edit. It is an amazing, functionality. Uh, it defaults now to automatically having the cursor in the search box. So if I want to type say coolant, I can instantly see coolant. And for again, when we do, when we switched over to a Delrin job, if we've applied a template and I realize, you know what, I need to make sure none of my coolants are on for any of these ops, I can select them all. And I select them all by clicking on the first one, hold down shift on your keyboard and click the last one, right click, compare and edit, coolant, and now I can change any or all of them, say in this case, to just air. Super useful. Another thing I really like and really encourage is switching between wireframe and the solid model view. And the best way to do that is to hop into the Fusion 360 app store, click on this first guy here, and type in visual styles. Download this app. That gives us this menu bar along the bottom. I like the center too. So this is shaded with visible or wireframe. So when I go into simulate, a lot of times I'll zoom in. I may pick show points and I can now click on a point and that's gonna, now that holder is not helping me right now. So under tool, I'm going to switch from holder to flute I can zoom in and I can orbit around and having that wireframe or solid model view can really help me analyze what's going to happen and how that's going to cut or enter or exit the path. Here's a new one. Did you guys know? If you go to this myhub.autodesk360.com, we'll put that link in the video description. If you log in, you can use Fusion in a web browser now. I think it has to be Chrome, but let's scroll down. and I'm in my Fusion Friday folder. I'm gonna click New, Fusion Design. No, this is not just the old A360 where you had access to the, like sort of see what your files were. I'm actually able to use Fusion. It's in beta, I think there's limited functionality, uh, and I haven't played around with it a lot myself, just to be honest, partly because I carry my MacBook with me everywhere, so that gives me Fusion on the go. 
but uh, certainly interesting. And this was one of the big differences between, say, Onshape and Fusion was that, uh, you know, being in a browser, you don't need to install a browser plugin. So you could do this from just about anywhere, or more importantly, if you've got to borrow a friend's computer or a public computer, the ability to hop in here and start modeling, pretty cool. We'll see where this goes. There is a new feature selection for holes. I don't think it's out just yet, but I think it's coming out quite soon. Uh, one year, Tim, who has a great Instagram, showed a little preview of it. I couldn't get to it even in the beta mode, but you're going to be able to select holes, not just on same diameter, but if they're on the same hole depth, the same top height, and you can all still auto merge them. I believe there's also a selection parameter, which will be great. You can draw 2D sketches that give you containment zones to only pick the holes within that super, super useful. Here's a new one I love, a welcomed improvement to creating dimensions. I have a C for circle. Say I create a circle right here. And we'll say it's a two inches. Now let's say I create another circle over here. And let's say I want the dimension between these two to be one inch, but not center to center from the outside of the two. In the past, this was a nightmare to do with construction lines. Hit D on your keyboard. It's a little bit of an awkward workflow because I hit D, it's ready to create a dimension. First, right click and change this option to pick circle or arc tangent. Now, when I click the outside of this guy and the outside of that guy, I can place it one inch, and I've now created a one inch distance tangentially so that, if, for example, if I drag this around, perfect, awesome. Speaking of that, one of my big things is to encourage folks to customize the preferences to what you like. For example, a lot of times when we're in Fusion, we may be working at an angle. See, I've got the view sort of orbited so that I'm looking at this from an isometric view. Under your name, preferences, by default, under design, Fusion checks auto look at sketch. I turn that off, but if I turn that back on, what happens is that when I hit say C for circle and I click on a plane, it automatically reorients to look straight at it. And yes, that can be helpful, but it's kind of taking a, a, an extra step that I don't need because again, I like to turn it off auto look off, and when I hit C for circle, I may wanna stay there because I'm, it's important for my 3D model or how I'm just thinking about the model. It's easy for me to get confused as your model moves or rotates around. And if I all of a sudden realize, you know what, I do need to look at it, you can use your view cube, in this case top would look it down, or if you're not sure, click on the little TV screen here, or the, I don't know what this is, a box with a sawtooth on top, it's called look at, if I click on that, I can now click on this plane and that will, oh, should have oriented me normal too. Is that a glitch? Let's try that with a solid model. That should have worked with a plane though. Click my little TV and I'll click on a plane. There we go. See now that orients me normal to something that otherwise would have been difficult in this case with this fourth axis part. You know, how do you otherwise confirm that you're looking straight on at that part? Another preference I like to change, also under design, is I like to turn off auto project geometry on active sketch plane. I'll leave it on for now. And what happens is, let's say I'm gonna create a sketch on this plane right here. L for line, select the plane, I'll pick that plane. What's happened is it's automatically included these two circles and their center point. And while that's, okay, and a lot of times it can be helpful, I don't always like that. So for example, let's say I was creating a line and I wanted that line to go out here, but not right next to it. What's trying to snap to it? Now you can avoid it making use of that auto projection by holding the control key. That stops it from automatically applying any constraints. But this was a really simple example. If you've got a complex model that's got multiple layers or multiple features on it, it's going to auto project a lot of stuff. So what I prefer to do is turn that off. Okay, I'll hit L for line, 
I'll create a sketch here. And let's say I want this inner circle, but not the outer circle projected. Just hit P on your keyboard. I can click this once and it automatically adds that projection in. But the other thing I like about this is that it shows I've got that purple projection. My criticism of the former way when it automatically includes it is that the projection is there, but Fusion doesn't show you the purple line. So it's kind of this in limbo zone of it's there and it'll snap too, but you're not seeing it. I like being able to see it so I can choose whether or not I want to make use of it. Finally, when it comes to learning Fusion or getting help or working with your customers, something I don't see enough people doing, go to your data panel, right click on a project, start live review. If you don't see that option, go to your name, preferences, preview, and add that checkbox for live review. This is incredible. All you have to do is share this link, email it to your customer, email it to your vendor, or email it to your tutor or mentor. They don't need to install anything. It opens in a web browser without, I don't believe it even requires any web browser plugins. And they're able to see your screen real time as you navigate your model. I'll be honest, usually I still pick up the phone and, and call them because I find that that's easier. Or you could use Skype to kind of supplement this. But what an awesome way. Doing screen shares is such an easy way, especially if you're a job shop working with customers. Explain to them why a feature may need change or it may make it easier to machine it or question about a toolpath. Folks, Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you next Friday.